All right, welcome to today's stream. Uh, and I was just fussing with the um, audio, so I'm just gonna wait until I can hear myself to make sure that it's working. Oh, I don't hear anything. Hmm. What about that one? Is that gonna oh, work? Can you I guys hear, hear that? Anything. Uh, I see that it's mm. responsive. Can somebody say something in the chat one. if you can hear me? Is that going to work? Oh, can you I guys hear, hear that? Uh, I see that mm. it's responsive. Hmm. Can somebody say what something in the one. chat if you can hear me? Is that going to oh, work? Can I you guys hear, hear that? Anything. Uh, I see that it's responsive. Hmm. Can somebody say something in the chat if you can hear me? Is that going to work? Can you guys hear me? I'm going to keep talking. Uh, uh, see thanks. Hmm. I can't see the somebody chat because it says live chat me. replay. Oh, this is... I'm going to keep talking. This is uh, fine. Uh, thanks. Hmm. I can't... I'm going to try reloading this. It says live chat replay. Oh, okay. Everyone can hear me. Gexa. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so today we are going to be using GeoPandas. Um, I haven't worked with it previously, so uh, it's going to be a learning experience for me. And it's supposed to be. This is the documentation. So today it's supposed to be just like a nice. Geopanic stick um, wrapper around pandas. So I'm hoping pandas. that this will oh, be okay. pretty so, intuitive uh, and straightforward. Uh, 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 and and we'll see how this is adopted. So, and the data set that I'm interested in using is like nice uh, this fair geopanic trade geopanic data from Distic Panzioptic. And so I'm hoping this will be pretty intuitive. I don't speak German. There's going to be a lot of butchering in German in today's stream. And the thing is, the data set that I'm interested in using that I originally wanted to know was where I could buy fair trade chocolate nerds. Because recently I've made a personal decision to uh, I don't speak German. This is on account of the slavery. Um, a lot of non-fair trade chocolate is produced using slave labor. Originally, where I could buy fair trade chocolate nerds. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should support that kind of decision. I don't speak German. This is on account of the slavery. So, that is my personal thing. And I was like, oh, I'll just look up where fair trade chocolate is available. And then where I had a really hard time doing that. So I think that's going to be a bit of a scraping project. Uh, and I can do that a little bit so, later on. That was my personal um, um, But while searching for that, I did find uh, the same data that I wanted, some stores that sell for trade things for this German city that I've never been in. Uh, and I okay, that. there's an audio problem a little bit so, later on. My what does it sound like? Um, and I was like oh, but just while searching for that, I did find... Uh, Okay, yeah, I figured out what's going on. <laughs> uh, that should sound much better. Okay, yeah, that sounds much better, at least to me in the uh, uh, recording. All right, now that I'm done assaulting your ears, sorry about that. Uh, let's get down to doing some analysis. So in this file, uh, and thank you for letting me know, by the way, I appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of file names that are in German. So I'm definitely going to be doing some Google translating to figure out what they mean. Um, and I think I, in the overview, linked the files and we can just translate the whole data set page. So that should be good. Uh, yeah, so this is the Vorschau. That's probably like look at it in the browser, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, and I'm going to translate this using Chrome. Uh, and hopefully it'll get these, these little fields in here. It did not. Uh, we'll figure that out. Anyway, so we have uh, a bunch of columns, some of which are longitude and latitude, which we can uh, use to create these plots. Uh, and I believe if we are 
doing this, we can just plot plot. We can just play at latitude and longitude. We can just plot latitude latitude and longitude um, as we would any other sort of um, place. And then we just need to find just, this is going to be such a big project, because uh, again, I don't work with geospatial data much. Uh, and then we can find the file that has the information for the shape file or the map. Uh, it looks like it's got open street map and stamen, stamen? Uh, for the particular area that we are interested in plotting. So that's the that's the plan. Uh, and one of these should be like the the type of thing that it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, are any of these gonna be? Oh, and this uh, the data is CC zero. Uh, Vishnu said, "Is there a link to the Kaggle page?" Sorry, I searched and could not find. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, uh, and I don't think I can actually send links. Yep, uh, I can't send links. So if you just search for this fair trade data for Han Hanseatic, Hans Hanseatic, um, if you search for this, uh, or if you go to my account, uh, and I am R Tatman, uh, we're going to be using my um, my incognito account, so you guys don't have to see the uh, sort of you know, dust behind the scenery as it were. Uh, and then you go to data sets and then you look for uh, updated. It will sort by the most recently updated and it's the one I have done most recently. So it's this one. Uh, yeah, oh, 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 this does. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it has been translated. Uh, this definitely looks like English. Um, so we have things like website, email, fax, phone. Don't really care about that. Um, we might be able to do something fun with opening hours so people like say when it is and then you can figure out whether or not it's open um and here this this kind i think is going to be the most um interesting so i think the retail trade are probably the ones we're going to be interested in i'm guessing that gastronomy means restaurant uh and that's just sort of based on my intuition about how machine translation from uh, very agglutinative languages works. So I think we're going to need to find these retail trade ones. Um, and I imagine you could find some fair trade chocolate at this chocolate house. And I imagine that chocolate house is translated from something else in German. If any of you speak German, I would really appreciate the help. Uh, but we also have, we've got the internet. We can figure this out. So let's start a notebook. Uh, and I'm going to call this mapping fair, fair trade in, what's the name of the place again? Um, uh, you know, what? I, I'm just going to call it mapping fair trade. Uh, and we're going to need NumPy and we're going to need pandas and we're also going to need, uh, geopandas, which I think is probably just geopandas. Yeah, just geopandas. Pandas. Uh, and then we're going to read in our data, data, um, fair trade. And it's like a fairly large data set, but it's not, nope, but it's not enormous. And it's p dot read underscore CSV. And then I give it the file path to where the file is. And this should work unless I'm bad at typing. Excellent. Uh, and let's really quickly check it in and make sure we didn't run into any problems. Uh, this is German, so we might end up with some, um, okay, excellent. I'm, so what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for characters with, um, diacritics, uh, rendering correctly to make sure that everything's UTF-8 and I'm seeing lots of different characters with umlauts. Um, so... I am pleased. Oh, here we go. Uh, so I think it's this. So this art is the one that is type. And this is the name. So, and then the rest of this, I don't know that we're super, super, super concerned with. Um, 
So let's start just by plotting it and then work our way from there. And I'm gonna put in some empty cells underneath so I can keep uh, the cell I'm working in closer to the center of the screen for you guys. Okay, what did you do? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so they just plot the data frame. And this is, okay, so this is plotting the data frame that is the New York, New York boroughs map information. So like the, the file that shares what shape these are. Um, so we're gonna need the ones for wherever it is in Germany, uh, which is kind of nice. It's nice that we're not just, um, what's what I'm looking for? We're not just doing New York. We do a lot of stuff with New York. New York's great. A lot of people live there. But there's other places in the world. It doesn't have to be about New York all the time. It doesn't have to be about the US all the time. Uh, okay, so there is this function that they use, add base map, and that looks useful. So I'm just gonna flip, pop it in. Uh, and I'm also gonna move my import up here. Actually, first I'm gonna run this cell and then I'm gonna move my import up there just to be, you know, just to be tidy. Uh, okay, so Tontextly is not actually installed by default, so we're gonna need to install it. Uh, and I'm assuming that this is the pip name of this package, and I could be wrong. So that's gonna take a minute. Uh, the thing that we can do next is figure out where they're getting the base maps and find out where we can get this one for Germany. And I don't know where in Germany it is. Uh, I'm guessing this is like, it's like a university town, so let's call it like the Durham. I'm guessing this is like the Durham of Germany. I don't know that that's the case. That's just what I'm imagining in my head. All right, and it's still thinking away, so let's look for that. So, uh, Hansa and... So I'm guessing Rostock is the name of the place. Hansa, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. So this is a um, machine translation of this. And I'm guessing that this attic here is just like the um, the machine translation, just like, oh, if there's a root and it's bare, then just like add attic to it because we know it's a, uh, a noun because it has a determiner in front of it. So it's probably Hansa Rostock and Universistat Rostock. If there's any German speakers, please let me know. I don't wanna just say wrong things. So let's look for Rostock map. Um, does it say where they're getting it from? It's from, okay, so let's go to here actually and see if we can't get more information. Uh, application error, Heroku. Oh, okay, that's an auspicious start. Uh, what if I go all the way to the end? Hmm, okay, let's not use these shape files. Let's find different shape files. And I think we should be able to use any shape files we want. Web map tiles are typically provided in Web Mercator. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that so this is the projection and i'm guessing that this is the file type okay so let's find open street map um and we're gonna want the ones from what do we say rostock rostock Germany. Okay, okay. That's in German. Uh, all right. And this does look like the place that I looked at earlier, just to make sure that I knew what it looked like. Where is it in relation to the rest of Germany? Northern coast? Northern coast. Okay, so like just south of... Denmark, like just south of Copenhagen. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, and it looks to be like a, a fairly mid-sized town. 
city. It's a city. Yeah. Okay. Um, bounding box. Active. Nutserlin in in Rostock. Stat Rostock. Stat. Streets maybe. Is that Strauss? No, that must be the plural. So this is fun watching me try to read German. I'm guessing this is like coverage. Like it's got good coverage. Um, I just want, just, I want the shape piles. Okay, so what did they do for the open, open street map? Um, so it uses contextually to retrieve web maps. So we need to figure out how contextually retrieves web maps. Web maps. Uh, and I want examples. I always want to see example code. In R, I would look for vignettes. Plotmap.py. Hit me up. How does it work? All right. Oh, I can search by name. So if I just search for Rostock, because I know that this is in the open street map now. Uh, and again, we're in the in the developed world. So this may not necessarily work for everywhere you guys are interested in. Um, all right. Excellent. And it installed. So we can just restart this it'll take a minute because it's um so it's actually restarting the the virtual machine so it's basically the equivalent of rebooting your computer but like in the cloud i don't know why the cloud's spooky it's because it's almost october and i'm feeling halloweeny uh, there are like little little decorative pumpkins at work now, and I am so into it. I'm all about it. Okay, uh, and then this add base map takes axes, zoom, URL. So we might not actually have a URL for our base map. Um, so we might actually have to use contextly instead. So let's try this. And let's try Rostock instead of Boulder and see if that works. And it was, and it looks like it's lowercase, so R O S T O C K. Mm. Warning, strongly discouraged. Okay. You may possibly call us a 403. Please specify a custom user agent with or overriding the default. In GeoPy 2.0, this will become an exception. Uh, okay, so we're actually using an API and we don't have the internet on, so that's probably why we're getting some of these errors. Um, so we're actually using an API to go and fetch, to fetch the file that's gonna show us the shape of the city. Sorry, I have to sneeze, but it's just not happening. Okay, well, I've got my button near the mute, so I will mute it if I have to sneeze. Um, and when you when you start the internet and when you start the the GPU, it does uh, relaunch the. Uh, let's move this up here. It does relaunch the VM every time, which is why it takes a minute to restart. Uh, and let's do this and let's do this, uh, and let's thank and. Okay, it worked. Um, but also maybe we shouldn't do it. So it's, it's using the API and it's using the default. Um, so we wouldn't want to use this for like a big thing because I'm guessing this is like their testing account. So I did something relatively recently showing how you can use the Google Speech API to transcribe speech, but it's the public API key, which is sort of like a, you know, it's like a shared resource. It's like, um, you know, like take a penny, leave a penny. If you, if you know what that is, like if you're, if someone's making change and they give you a penny and you don't need it, there's like a little, sometimes like a little jar or a little bowl by the register and you just leave it there. And then if somebody's a cent short when they're paying for it, they can take a penny from there. Uh, and as long as everyone's like putting a little bit and taking a little bit, that's fine. But if somebody like walks up and just like takes the, the jar of pennies and just dumps it into their bag, um, clearly the system won't work long term. So yeah, public APIs are like take a penny, leave a penny. So you want to be like a little bit look a little bit nice about them. Um, hopefully one query is not going to be a big problem. We'll find out. Um, and it will be deprecated eventually. So, okay. So now we have our location. Okay. Okay. 
and okay so the first thing was plotting the shape on the outside and the second one was putting a plot a map behind it so oh I see I see I see okay so this may not work uh, again if this this website is down uh, that we're using to get the maps from but let's try this and try it with the name of Rostock and see if that will work it did not it absolutely did not work okay um, what if instead of that we use the lock the location error the location data we just brought in well, that's not gonna work okay uh, what if we just long term location is that gonna work yeah okay I guess we got to import plot uh, where was I I was trying to plot it. Mm. Okay, that also didn't work. Uh, sorry, I know it's a lot of scrolling back and forth because I haven't. Oh, here we go. It's ctx.plotmap is the thing that we do. Oop. And then we tell it that we want a plot location. <gasps> hey, I see some German words. Excellent. Okay, so we've made a map. Um... And I'm going to actually get rid of these cells. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so get map of location rostock. All right. Uh, and then create. And the reason I'm not moving into them, these two into the same cell, even though I'll probably do that before I share my notebook, um, is because I don't want to make a bunch of API calls with a public API key. Um, so, and I'm going to be plotting a bunch. Um, so this says Rostock, Mecklenburg, Vorpommern, Vorp hmm? uh, I'm guessing this is a zip code, and then Deutschland is Germany. Uh, yeah, it looks like a nice place, sort of like a deep natural bay, maybe kind of like Seattle. I don't know, I've never, have I been to Germany? I don't think I've ever been to Germany. I've been to Vienna. Um, pretty much all the traveling I've done has been for, for work trips and going to conferences. So mostly I've seen the inside of fancy foreign uh, uh, hotel conference spaces or classrooms. Okay, the Zoom level will be chosen for you by default, although you can specify this manually as well. You can also grab tile information directly from Bounding Box plus Zoom level. This is mm, demoed below. Okay, so what we should probably do now is we should probably try adding points to this plot. And we have points that are latitude and longitude in uh, the fair trade. Uh, so I'm gonna call this, uh, what's the place again? Rostock? Rostock. Rostock map. All right. Uh, and I should be able to refer to that later and I'm gonna get rid of this. So as it turns out, I'm not actually using GeoPandas at all right now. Um, I'm using the, the package that GeoPandas relies on, but I imagine that as we continue to move forward, uh, GeoPandas will become much more pleasant. Uh, so how do I add points to a map? Uh, points to a map plot lib plot. Add points to map plot lib data frame how to plot two columns of pandas data frame using points uh, okay all right just work with matplotlib directly okay so let's try. So that's location, that's the map. 
there's this name of the map. Now I think we called it plot, not plot. Uh, and then the data frame is called fair trade, I believe, with an underscore. And then I want to look at just the head so I can make sure that I know what the names are. Uh, so it is fair underscore trade. I'm just going to copy and paste here. And then it is latitude and longitude. Hopefully in that order. I guess we'll find out. Uh, function has no attribute scatter. Hmm. Okay. Um, I've been matplotlib.pyplot and we imported matplotlib.pyplot as plot. All right. What attributes do you have? So I'm going to do plot period and tab to bring up the list of possible ways to end this. It was plot, right? Yeah, plot. Tab complete. Tab complete. All right, that's not working. Function matplotlib.pyplot.plot args keywords. Uh, okay. Uh, matplotlib.pyplot.plot scatter. Matplotlib.pyplot.scatter and then x and then y. So this should work. Hmm. Interesting. But I do notice that this is matplotlib.pyplot.scatter. Um, GR says, is it PLT? No, it's not. I checked that. I mean, we could import it as PLT, but I just happened not to. Uh, so I do notice that here it is matplotlib.pyplot.scatter and that here it is matplotlib.pyplot.plot. And I don't know if that is because of the way... Oh, we didn't import pyplot. We imported plot from matplotlib. So if we wanted to... Okay, I see what the difference is. So um, instead of importing just this as plot, we imported plot from within this package. Uh, so I am going to also say, uh, I'm actually just going to do import matplotlib as pyplot. I know I'm going off the rails. I'm doing weird things. Uh, where did we use it? Nowhere, I think. Okay, so now I should be able to do pipe. Uh, so I should be able to do pyplot dot plot dot scatter. Mm, I um, can still not. Pyplot dot. Dot plot. Dot dot nothing. Okay. Uh, was it? Oh, that's right. It's just in pyplot. It's just in pyplot. So this whole dot plot thing was wrong. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. We're getting there. Uh, so what we have here, you can sort of see the shape of the water here. It kind of looks like uh, a backwards letter C um, or I don't know. It sort of looks like a backwards letter C. And here we can sort of see the shape of the water. So it sort of looks like a backwards letter C as well. How do we get these things together? How do we make, how do we add points to uh, ctx.plotmap is I think my question. So add points to ctx.plotmap. JavaScript. That was not my question. I don't want to know. Uh, maybe it's matplotlib. Let's try that. Matplotlib add points to plot. So maybe I can just use that syntax if it's using uh, pyplot under the hood. 
So to add them, they're doing everything in one, in one go. Okay. So here, it's plotting a bunch of things all together. So maybe, so this could be our locations, maybe. And if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, then we might be able to do highplot dot plot and tell it that we want the row stock map and the locations that did not work we got a type error uh float argument must be string or number it's not axes subplot <laughs> of course how could i be so foolish as to send it an axes subplot okay um jess says can't matplotlib and geopandas coexist yes uh, the problem is that this row stock map that we have here is not from GeoPandas. It is from this contextly package, which is what um, GeoPandas is wrapped around. So I think what I'm doing is I'm finding, here it is. Um, yeah, so when we tried to read the file in GeoPandas, it didn't work. Uh, let's try this. This might be easier. A geodata frame needs a shapely object, so we create a new column coordinates. So this is the difference. So instead of a shapely object, what we have is like, I'm guessing like a little snippet of the open street map. So this is this big map that covers a lot of area, and we have like a tiny little chunk of it. Um, and it's just showing us that as a picture. So I don't no, this might just be a flat picture. It might not have like, you know, tracing in it to tell us where the streets are. I don't know, man. Maps are complicated and I'm so dumb about them. Uh, okay, GIS needs a shapely object. So we can create a new column coordinates as a tuple of latitude and longitude. Um, we create a new column coordinates as a tuple of latitude and longitude. Latitude and longitude. Okay. Oh my God, this is so many things. Okay, so this is creating a specific, a specific type of data structure that we can plot over a country level map. I don't want a country level map, I want a city level map. Uh, hmm. Let's try, GeoPandas city level map with points. And this is why cartography is like a whole, that's like a whole uh, field of study. And we're back where we started. I don't want a chloroplast. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. That was my back. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't. It was kind of horrifying, very crunchy. Hmm. Using matplotlib objects, world plot, um, cities.plot. So these are world.plot and cities.plot, it looks like, are in the data set. But if I'm looking at where our city should be, it looks like they've got Copenhagen, but they don't have Rostock. So that's kind of a problem. Can I use, okay, so what type of object is is this, uh, is lock? Let's find out. Uh, is it, predict? oh, I think it's type, I think it's type. Okay, so it's a contextually dot place dot place is the type of object that this is that has this nice map in it. Uh, and 
I need to figure out a way to put points on top of it. And I know where the points are in a latitude longitude scale, which is also how this is plotted. Uh, add points. All right. Uh, Berkeley campus, add some context to your data points. I like the sound of gists. Test.geoson, serialize geofeather.ipnb, ipynb, ipython notebook. Um, I don't like this, I don't like this foro for, this uh, forum, uh, file format I haven't seen before. Uh, it makes me nervous and I don't want to learn a new one. Uh, okay. We push the new release of Contextly, a Python library to pull web tiles from the internet that can be used as contextual maps. Besides a few big bug places, the main addition is to release is the places API that Chris included. This is a super handy way to quickly pull down a tile for an area. Let's see a quick example. Yes, adding data points. That is what I want. All right, you can plot it quickly with new plot underscore map function. Yes, 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 yes. Voila, you're done. Same as with what any other contextly object, since it's all based on matplotlib, tiles are treated as images and bounds are returned. So you can integrate them with any other geodata you're working with in Python, say by using geopandas or pysal, S-A-L. We have also updated the main guide notebook, so be sure to check that out check it out to find out all that is possible with the new contextly uh, install. Well, that does not tell me how to do, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay, so it is a matplotlib object. It's an image. So what I want to know is in matplotlib, how do you put points in an image? Matplotlib points on an image, image. Yes, yes, okay. Plot dot I am read. Yes, let's try this. And I know that we're gonna have to, we're gonna be re-importing over our other code, but uh, so the image here is actually gonna be called uh, Rostock map, I think. Let's see what type you are. I think this should be the image or matplotlib axis subplot. Uh, okay, so what if I just try it with the map that we've read in? Let's go, let's go. So if I try that, uh, and then we had our scatter. So we're gonna replace their example scatter with mine. Um, Jar says, Oh, two things. First, Ilya says, would this be easier in R? I don't know. I haven't done a lot of plotting in R either, so shrug. And Jer says, I guess plotting right now is difficult because your data frame is a pandas data frame object, not a geo pandas object. Yes, that's definitely part of it. Uh, but I also just want to know how to plot the, the image that we're getting from the doohickey. Ah, oh, beans. And I did a bad job selecting exactly what I wanted. Okay, and get rid of the rest of this nonsense and hopefully it will just work. It did not work. Axis subplot has no attribute read. Uh, okay, adding dots to an axis sub because we got the we got the latitude and longitude items to plot and that was fine uh the problem is that we have this subplot and i want to add things to it to the figure you had axes so it's already a subplot i'm confused i'm also just confused by matplotlib in general uh Oh good, we're in MATLAB land now. Nope. Uh, I don't like MATPLOTLIB because it is very MATLABY. Very MATLABY. Oh, yes, that is what I want. Subplots. Okay. 
create a figure instead of subplots, this utility wrapper makes it convenient to create common layouts of subplots, including the enclosing of a figure object in a single cell. All right, how's this look? Uh, Plot.subplots. Okay, so it's already a subplot. So I might be able to do plot dot uh, Okay. What are what are these things again? I'm I'm confusing myself. Okay, so uh row stock map. So the map once we've made it, that is an axis subplot. Before that, the location is contextually.place.place. .place. So what if we try to read the place in rather than the map? That doesn't work, it fails in the same place. Object does not appear to be an 8-bit string path or a Python file-like object. Uh, okay. It is in fact contextually dot place dot place. So how do you plot that? I know that there's a special function for it, but I want to plot it with base matplotlib. Mm. All right, uh, I will look at the source code for plot underscore map. Okay. Uh, show the map. Okay, we've been here before. The simplest approach is to search location with text. Okay, we've done that. This has all worked out really well for us. And then there's plot underscore map. And that is what's creating the subplot. Uh, owner suggests restock underscore map dot scatter. Let's try that. Dot underscore map dot scatter, and then I have the scatters that I want here. If this works, I'm going to be so delighted. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Huh. Uh. Well, that didn't have any errors, so I'm very excited about that. Um, downside is I can't see it. Uh, is it show or is it dot show? I think it's dot show, which I don't think you usually need to use in uh, kernels. It has no attribute show. Okay. Um, Plot, what is this called? Uh, it's an axis subplot. Okay. I just want to see it. So perhaps we can do dot plot and see we're using data frame. Let's try that. So maybe it's restock map dot plot. Nope. Plot. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, noted. Okay. So it doesn't not work. So that's good. Uh, we're not getting errors, which I like. We're also not getting a map, which I like less. Hmm. Can I do dot show? No. Axis subplot object has no attribute dot show. What attributes do you got? Add artist, add callback, add collection, add image, add line. Okay, box plot. Hmm.
dot plot. Okay, let's try that. Bound method of axes dot plot. Still no. Hmm. I think we tried that before and we got the same output, so let's see. So we were at P. Row number scatter. Set stream tables title twiny update axes zorder. Uh Okay, we have an axis subplot object that should have our scatter and our nice uh, so let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's that still doesn't work. Uh maybe I have to do pipot dot plot rostock map, maybe that'll help. I get rid of this as well. Goodbye. Nope, that don't do it. Uh, why doesn't that do it? Float argument must be a string or a number, not axis subplot. Okay, noted. Uh, get rid of you. Move you up. So we've got points for the locations. Mm. And this works, no errors, but we don't know how to plot it once we've added the points. And if we just, if we just print it out by itself, it tells us that it is an axis subplot. And we can't do dot plot, and we can't do dot show measure. Yeah, that doesn't work. Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. Matt, plot, lib, show me the forbidden uh, axes sub plot. Axes is a pi plot that sub plot. Uh, Right axis is subplot, axis plot, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Add subplot to the current figure. Wrapper of figure dot add subplot with a difference in behavior explained in the notes section. Show me example code. Okay, so it's add a subplot with not no frames. Uh, okay, so we can, so we might be able to do, excuse me, uh, so is that the name of the subplot or is that the, no, okay, that's not, that is the name of the, the method. Oh, and just to uh, show you guys, we can get, so we can get no problem. We can get our, our points plotted. Um, what if we did the city map second? I don't think this is gonna work. Sure enough, it did not work. I wonder if it works like R where it creates a single object. No, okay, so we've we've plotted both of them at the same time. Uh, can we chain them like this in that way that people do in Python? I like it. 
like the sound of that. Uh, so the reason I'm switching these is I looked at our, our <laughs> plot and I noticed that up here is our weensy little map and then down here are all our little dots and that they are not on the same axes. So I'm very pleased. We did it. Okay. So what we had to do was, can you do that? Will that parse good? It will not. Ugh. My kingdom for some gosh darn pipes. Oh, I'm sorry, there's something in R that makes this type of command flow much nicer. Um, do I even need plot.show? Can I just get rid of you? I can. Okay, so what we ended up doing, I think we can actually get rid of all of this, uh, is we got the map for the location and then we added scatter points using this particular syntax. I don't know why this syntax works and the other syntax doesn't, but there you go. Uh, and I think from here we should be able to manipulate this. Uh, Chier says, close the entire sentence in parentheses. Like so. And then we could be able to do like so. And like so. Yeah, that works. Excellent. Thank you. It still looks ugly. Uh, but it's much easier to read. Uh, get rid of you. You were worthless. Mm, you were worthless. Don't need this. Okay, uh, so all we ended up doing was, and this is hidden, excellent. Uh, so we imported a bunch of stuff and we never actually ended up using GeoPandas at all. Uh, and we read in our data and then we went and we got, using the public API, the information for this city Rostock in Germany. And then we use the plot map function from CTX, this contextly package, to plot a map given the information that we grabbed from the web. Uh, and then we used our latitude and longitude points to plot those. Uh, this is still not super helpful. So what I want to do is I want the color to be based on the type of thing it is. And I think I don't actually want any zoom adjust to be done manually. I think I want it to happen automatically and it will look better. I was wrong. It did not happen automatically and it did not look better. Um, cause I just really want the city bit. So I'm wondering maybe if we do zoom as two, that will look better. I don't, mm, oh, HTTP error. 404 not found. Okay, uh, what if I do one? I think it used to be one. I think I'm not doing anything with the, the additional zoom. Yeah, okay, yeah, that didn't change anything. Uh, what if, what was this? Context lead zoom adjust. So we have learned something sort of interesting, which is that according to the city database, if you are uh, not in, um, in the city, you don't get access to fair trade chocolate, which is a little sad. Or I guess anything fair trade. It's not just chocolate. Uh, it's just that chocolate is what I care more about. The level of detail to include in the map, higher levels mean more tiles and thus longer download time. If none, the zoom level will be automatically determined. Uh, so two didn't work. What about like 1.5? Is that gonna work? It does not work. Could not retrieve map. What about 10? Does it only work in factors of 10? Four, four, not found. And then this should create an error because we didn't actually go and get the location. Oh, oh, I see. So the location was before we, the error was before we um, reassigned something over location. And if we just get rid of it entirely, we get the exact same thing as one, correct? Yeah, okay, I'll live with it. That's fine. Um, 
the example has a zoom of 10. Cher says, uh, yeah, it seems to be giving errors for this particular area and I don't know why. And Vishnu says, I just got a blue dot and a super tiny map. So uh, what I did was that I had latitude and then longitude instead of longitude and then latitude. So um, the coordinates of one of them were flipped. So it was basically saying it was on the opposite side of the world that it was actually on. Uh, whoopsies. Um, what's the name of the city? Rostock. Someone's going to come up to me at some point and be like, actually, it's pronounced Bremel. And I'll be like, what? No, German's pretty, German's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, pronunciation. Uh, and I can't figure out how to get the zoom gooder. So we'll just live with it. I'll, you know, I'll leave myself a little to do. To do. Figure out how to zoom in on just the city. Uh, and I have no idea how that works. And then uh, perhaps we can, let's see, we've got about five minutes left. Let's see if we can do colors based on the, uh, uh, the type of thing that it is. And this is the sort of thing where I could do this in a minute in R and it's gonna take me a bit in pandas. Uh, Vishnu got it out. Yeah, no worries. I also did the exact same thing. All right. Uh, pi plot color based on column label. Oh, I don't, it's, mm, yes, yes, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I want. Someone's like, this is easy to do in R. It is easy to do in R. Uh, you can pass plot that scatter as C argument, which will allow you to select the colors. So color equals, the code below defines a color dictionary to map to your diamond colors on the plot. Ugh, you mean you have to pick the colors by hand? That seems like a pain in the butt. Uh, without Seaborn using pandas group by, yeah, that seems helpful, but you'll have to manually assign colors. Okay. Uh, find a color palette you like and optionally visualize it. All right, let's try this. This seems to work pretty well. So this looks like you're grabbing colors at reasonable inter intervals. Um, different kinds of venues, different colors. So it seems like you're you're sort of taking uh, something you like and then at various intervals, you are um, splitting it apart. Uh, and we've got to import Seaworn as SNS. So this should create two plots. It did not. Oh, that's right, because uh, data frame isn't a thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this here, uh, and we're going to do these two in place of these two, because that's the X and the Y coordinates, and that's what we're getting rid of, and we're replacing with our X and our Y coordinates, and then we've got this color function. Uh, and inside of color form, I think it was art. Was that it? Let's check out the data really quick. I'm pretty sure that's what, what it was. Uh, gonna, sorry, it looks a little bit funky if I'm zoomed super out. So I'm gonna the super in, so I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Uh, longitude, Rostock, Queensland University. Uh, this is not the most helpful view. Get rid of you. Uh, I think it was art. Uh, Yara says, that's Seaborn code. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think it'll work anyway. 
And if it doesn't, then you can laugh at me and say, yeah, you told me so. Um, what was I looking up? Uh, oh, right. Uh, I just want to look at the head of this and really quickly see what it is. Fuck. Uh, yeah, it was. All right. So this is school. This is something. This is restaurant. Uh, and it was art, and instead of that, it is fair trade. Okay. Let's give it the old college try. Get rid of this because we don't need to plot things twice. Oh, uh, except this is fair trade and not DF. Hey, it worked. Okay, so now we have all of the different locations as different colors. Also, this is super hard to read. Um, and let's import Seaborn up here at the top with the rest of our imports to be tidy coders uh, and get rid of this little peeking at the head because again, tidy coders. Uh, from this. Method from this stack over. Oh yeah, it's uh, stack over close ten squares today. Uh, and I'm just gonna post a little breadcrumb so we can go back and find it if we want to. Uh, okay. So happy birthday, stack overflow. So I think the only seaborn code here is in the figuring out. Um, this getting this automatic color palette um so in r oh there's a really good color palette uh there's a super duper good color palette package called i don't remember called something it's really good i enjoy it a lot i often use it um but yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good start. And now if I just have the same information for a, um, a different map or a different place, I can plot it just by getting the different location files. So I ended up not using GeoPandas pretty much at all. In Rostock is the name of the city. Uh, and instead I ended up using a lot of uh, this contextually uh, package, which was fairly easy to use. Um, I've used some APIs that are horrendous, so it's really nice to have just like a very simple API with like a very Pythonic wrapper. So 10 out of 10 would use again. Um, and we, we got to have a nice, nice visualization. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I don't have a key to what all of these colors stand for, uh, but I noticed that there's just a couple greens, so maybe those are the schools, or maybe it's like a fair trade museum or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what orange is, but this looks like it's right downtown. So something that would only be downtown is the orange. All right. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm going to commit this and then make it public so you guys can check it out if you're interested. Um, and it's like anything I can do in an hour is not going to be super fancy pantsy. Uh, but hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I'm excited to be getting a little bit more into different types of data. But I did have a request on Twitter for more language data. Uh, and if you know me, I am always happy to work with language data. So we might do a couple NLP things after this. But I just wanted to get my get my feet dirty. Nope, hands dirty. That's how it's said. Uh, yeah. And if you search for, um, you can search for Rachel Tatman non-admin, uh, or you can search for mapping fair trade in Rostock, and it should be available because the commit just finished. Thanks for joining me. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you next next week. I had to think about it. I had to think about my schedule. I will be here next week. So maybe something NLPE. I don't know. If you have fun ideas, let me know. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.